slaves were permitted to sing. Songs were where their dreams took flight. Where they expressed faith, love, as well as pain and fear and unimaginable loss. Songs were also how they conveyed information, the location of safe houses for runaway slaves, or directions for a path towards freedom, buried in the coded language of divine lyrics. They sang songs of liberation, not for their bodies in this world, then for their souls in the next. And over time, those spirituals blended with hymns and sacred songs to become the music of the black church. The decades after the Civil War, as free men and women streamed north in record numbers, searching for a new life, they brought those tunes with them. But the gospel music we know today really started in the 1930s, when jazz musician Thomas A. Dorsey combined the sounds of the church he grew up in with the jazz and blues that he loved. By the 1960s, gospel music had become central to the civil rights movement. Not just through the political activism and legends like Mahalia Jackson and the Staples Singers, but through the songs themselves. From hymns like Take My Hand, Precious Lord, the favorite of Dr. King's, the anthem of the movie, Shall Overcome. Gospel music has evolved over time, but its heart stays true. It still has an unmatched power to strike the deepest core in all Jackson himself once said, Blues are the song 